got you through this day. Amen. Praise the Lord. He woke you up in your right mind. Amen. He gave you travel and mercy to come down here today. It didn't have to be, but it is. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Here we are at the table ready to eat again. So I, I hope you came with an appetite tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Y'all don't seem too excited. All right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I don't know what you come to do, but I come to praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So if you came with any other agenda, you might as well go ahead and turn around. All right. Amen. Amen. The, the Lord wanted us to be uncomfortable tonight. He said if we come down here and the AC working and we getting relaxed, we're going to be comfortable. So the, the word he gave me to speak to y'all tonight is going to make you uncomfortable. But but he's just setting the atmosphere and setting the mood, okay? Amen. Just know, just know it's not me. Just know it's not me, it's him. I ain't had nothing to do with it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So if you I get you by your head so we can go into prayer. Amen. Father God, we come to you first just asking forgiveness for all the sins we have committed against you. Word, deed, action, Lord, even the idle thoughts, Lord. Lord, we like to thank you for this day, Lord, for this is the day we have never seen before and we'll never see it again. And we just want to thank you for it, Lord. Lord, we come today praying for all the bereaved families, Lord. We ask that you will comfort them, Lord. Send a hedge of protection around them, Lord. Give them strength to go through this ordeal. Let them know that the storm will come, but the storm will pass. Amen. Let them know that their help comes from you, Lord. Help them to keep their eyes on you, the author and the finisher of their faith, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for the bishop of this household, Lord. Continue to keep them fit, uh, faithful, Lord. Continue to keep a hedge of protection around them, Lord. Continue to guard his ears, Lord. Protect his eyes, Lord. And surround them with, with men and women that's willing to go into the vineyard and work, Lord. Lord, not for self-glory, but for your name, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for all this and everything. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and say amen. Amen. You, you can have a seat. I, I won't keep you standing too long. I know somebody, you might got bad feet out there, but we're going to praise the Lord for the bad feet. Amen. Tonight's, me tonight's message is uh, disciple or apprentice. Amen. We all know what an apprentice is, correct? Like an apprentice, you go, um, you, you learn a trade. Um, I'm going to use carpenter. Um, for no particular reason, but I'm going to use carpenter. So when you're an apprentice of a carpenter, you go, and the carpenter will teach you the skills that you need to do the job. Um, and along with teaching you the, the skills that you need to do the job, um, he will tell you certain tools and things that you need to put in your tool bag so that you could do the job. Amen? Amen. And, and, and a disciple is a, a follower of Christ. And in turn, what we should be doing is we should be teaching and, and educating the ones behind us about God and about his goodness and about how if they want everlasting life, then they need to surrender, be baptized, receive the Holy Ghost, and s live a life for Christ. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to ask this tonight. Are we a disciple of God or are we an apprentice of the world? Think about that for a minute as, as we get ready to, to take on this word and dive into this message and eat. I hope you came with an appetite tonight because uh, Chef Johnson is going to try his best to serve up the word that God has given me. Amen. Amen. It, it, it didn't come from me. I, um, when I, when it, we get the calendar and I go out and I look and I always try to circle or remember when it's my turn to speak. And I ask the Lord, like, you know, I, I don't want to get up here and give him me. Like, I don't want to get up there and give him Adrian. I want to get up there and give him you. So what do you want me to tell him? Like, not what Adrian wants to tell him, but what do you want me to tell him? So that's when he said, a disciple or apprentice, uh, or apprentice. And he left it at that. He didn't tell me no more. So I'm like, okay. So so then he, he gave me a word to read. And so I had to go read it. And, and as we look in, in today's times, and, and we're going to get to the word. Um, as we look at today's times in the world and in the church, um, the, the tradesman field is, is falling off. It's decreasing. No one wants to learn trades anymore. Everyone wants to, to run after what's um, the glorified jobs, the glorified positions. They want to go after what they think is the, the bag, the money. But little do they realize that the, the trades is what built the world and what, what got us to where we are today. So without the trades, we without the tradesmen, we wouldn't be have some of the luxuries that we have today. Likewise, before us, we didn't we didn't just fall into this word of God. Someone had to teach us. Someone had to show us the way. Someone had to take us to church. And as we look into the world today and we look around, we, we, me, myself, I ask myself, like, like what's, what's going on? What's wrong? What's the problem? Like, we, we see the kids and we see the youth, like, they, they don't want to go to church. They don't want to know God. 
and they, they, they just want to be rebellious. They want to run around. They want to do whatever they want to do. And I, and I asked, I said, God, why, like, why is that? And he said, just take a look. There's no one teaching them. Though we say we are, though we say we saved, are we really teaching them God? And if, we're all, if we are really teaching them God, they wouldn't be how they are today. So at some point, the, the body of Christ got separated from God and turned to the things of the world. Now, I'm going to start at Matthew uh, 23. When you got it, say amen. Amen. And, and Jesus was talking to the scribes and the Pharisees beca because they were supposed to be teaching the word of God. Amen. But they was teaching the word of God, but they, they had ulterior motives and other agendas. So as we sit here tonight, I want us to ask ourselves, are we, are we taking the word of God for our own personal gain, or are we taking it because we want to see someone saved? Are we teaching them because we think it's the right thing to do, or are we teaching them because we want a pat on the back, or we want everybody to say, hey, look, look what I done just did, okay? And then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, the scribes and the Pharisees sit at Moses' seat. All therefore, whatsoever they did, you observe, that observe and, and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. Meaning, they say, um, okay, se seek ye the kingdom of God and all these things that be added to you, but they don't do that. They seek the bag first. They seek self-pleasures first. They tell you when you go to work, work as if you're working unto the Lord and not man. But, but when we go to work, we'll get mad at the slightest little um, situation and get upset, but not realizing we're a reflection of God. We're supposed to be disciples. When we got baptized and accepted Jesus Christ as our life, we became disciples. Like when we went and, and took that job, we became apprentices of our boss or whatever that position was. So we vowed to do whatever they taught us and, and teach the people behind us so that the job could get done. When we got baptized, we vowed to, to do the work of God, to show love, to be kind, to have mercy, to show grace, to, to just be good, good people. Amen. Next five tells us, but all their works they do to be seen for men. They make broad their uh, polarities, forgive me for that, and enlarge their borders of their garments. Can't really pronounce everything, but the more I read it, the more I get it. So just keep me in prayer. Amen. Amen. Meaning that, that they did their works to be seen. Like um, one, one thing I've, I really um, I, I don't, I ain't going to say I, I don't like, I dislike is when, when people help someone and then they, they broadcast what they just did. Like, oh, okay, I, I just, oh, look at me. I just gave this homeless man $5, which in all actuality was nothing for you because you were almost a millionaire. So you could have put him in a room and board and did more, but you wanted to hear the self-gratification and the people say, good job, well done. So I ask you, are you a disciple of God or are you an apprentice of the world? Because the world wants self-gratification, wants to glorify itself. But the disciple of God wants God to be glorified, like not himself, wants God to be glorified. So if we want the kingdom to grow and expand and God's work to be done, we, the disciples, the baptized believers, have to be the example to the world, the unbelievers, because they don't see, they don't walk by, we walk by faith, not by sight. They don't. They walk by sight, not by faith. M meaning, you know, the old timers used to say, seeing is believing. So they need to see it. So you can't tell them, um, forgive thy neighbor, turn the other cheek when someone does something to you, you ready to cut the head off and you bash him. But you're a disciple, you're a child of God, whether you're a minister, whether you're an evangelist, whether you're on the praise team. If you're a baptized believer, you're a disciple, you got a job to do, you need to be doing it. You're the example that needs to be set. And the problem is, is we've, we've come too, too far to, we want to pat ourselves on the back and we want to be glorified. We, don't, we want God's glory. And the, the, the kingdom of God is not growing because we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing. Amen. 13 goes on to tell us. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, neither, your, neither suffer ye them to, or to enter in, to go in. Meaning, you don't, you come, but when you leave here, you don't take nothing that, you, that you've learned today and take it back out in the world, so you're not helping nobody. What good is it for me? Um, I like to eat, 
eat steak. I only like to eat uh, local steak, so I purchase steak from Willie Got It, Willie Wagon in Leonardtown. And he sells that uh, awesome Delmonico. So if you're ever in the area, go get that Delmonico steak. But it would do me no good. I, and I couldn't stand here to tell you about how good that steak is. If I, went, if I got the steak, I went home, I put it in the freezer, and I never ate it. I have to eat it. I have to chew on it. I have to digest it so that when I see you, I can tell you how good that piece of steak was. Man, it was marble content. Man, it was great. Likewise with the word of God. We come here. We receive the word. We sit down. We go home. We don't uh, try to digest the word or tell others about what we heard. We just take the word and keep it all to ourselves. What good is it to ourselves? We got the word to help others, not just ourselves. Amen. What want to you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses and for precedence make long prayers. Therefore, you shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you, you compass the sea and land to make one precedent. And when it is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Amen. What, what are we doing? What are we doing to church, the body of Christ, what are we doing? Like, really? Like, it's time, and I, and I speak this to myself because I first must first bring myself under subjection before I can stand up here and speak to you, but we all in this thing together. This ain't a one-man band. This ain't a one-man team. We in this thing together for, for the glorifying and the growing of God's kingdom, not Adrian's, not Bishop's. Amen? I, I bless the Lord for Bishop because I've known Bishop all my life. I'm, I'm 40, 45 years old. Amen? I'm 45 years old, and I've known Bishop all my life. Now, he, he tell you all the stories of when he used to pick the, the elderly, the lame, and the, and the weak. He, he tell you all the stories of when he used to pick them up, but I used to see him. This was before he was a bishop, before he was a pastor. I didn't know what, um, le what level he was at in the ministry, but I, I just knew he was a man of God, and through his actions, that's what he showed. Like, the, the loving, the caringness, like he, he tell us to give, to pay our tithes. Like, he don't just tell us to do it. He, he, he does it himself. Like, he tell us to love one another, to forgive. He, he doesn't just tell us that. He, he does it himself. So, likewise, we, we're learning from him. We should be a reflection of, of what we're learning. And if we're not reaping fruit, we need to ask ourselves, what, what are we sowing? Like, I planted some tomatoes, and, and I'm starting to see some tomatoes, glory to God. I was a little concerned there at first. The elder, I was like, oh, I better get some tomatoes. But I, 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 I couldn't plant tomatoes wanting watermelon and got mad when I got the tomatoes. Like, you know what I'm saying? We, we can't do that. Amen? So 16 goes on to tell us, Woe unto you, you blind gods, which say, Whatsoever shall swear by the temple is nothing, but whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. See, we put our trust in, in things, and that's the worldly part of us. Like, that's the worldly thing. That, like, we, we say, um, okay, I, I got this car, or one, one of my biggest pet peeves, and, and I hope don't nobody take this the wrong way, and I'm not trying to offend nobody, but me and my wife have conversations all the time, and she asks me, you know, wh what are the, some of the things that I like? And I tell her I like natural. I like natural. So for me to see someone with the, uh, and please don't take this the wrong way, with the tracks and the eyelashes, it, it tells me that, that there's some insecurities going on there, and they're not confident with, with what God gave them and where they are. Amen? S so they put, th they put their trust and their belief in, in the eyelashes and the hair and the things, and, and not in where it should be, Elder, in the Lord. Amen? My wife will tell you sometimes um, <laughs> I, I don't want to get my hair cut, and I, I like to um, – yeah, Natural, bitch. Natural. I don't want to get my hair cut, and, and sometimes when I go to work, I'm supposed to dress business casual, but I don't. I wear um, black pants, black shirt, black hat. And it's because one thing I've noticed, and I, to and I told my wife this, um, it was an it was a, a individual at work, um, okay, and I will always walk by because you're supposed to be pleasant wherever you are, whatever you're doing. I try to be pleasant to everybody, so I will walk by and I will speak, but this young lady, she wouldn't speak to me. So I'm like, okay, fine, you know, I'm going to keep it moving, up, but I'm still going to speak. So one day, as it so happens, I'm coming down the hall, and I'm going to get back to the word. I'm coming down the hall, and um, the, the aides was at the counter, and they, they needed something. So they said, there go the boss man right there. So once she seen that I was the boss man, her whole demeanor changed. Now she want to talk. Now she want to have something good to say. And see, people, 
Well, depending on what you put your trust and faith in, people will treat you accordingly. If they see that you put your trust in, in material things, then that's how they're going to treat you. But if, if they know that your trust is in the Lord, they know they can't handle you any kind of way. They know that they can't talk to you any kind of way. Amen? Sef- 17 goes on to tell us, you fools, bind up for whether, whether is what is greater, the gold or the temple, the sanctify the sanctifi- the the sanctifi- the sanctify the gold, and whosoever shall swear by the altar is is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. You fools and blind up for whatever is greater, the gift or the altar that sanctify the gift. Wh- which one are we putting our trust in? Are we putting our trust in the Creator, the one that gave us the ability to get these things, or are we putting our trust and faith? In the gift, Amen. Who who are we talking to? As as disciples of of Christ, we should be showing the example, showing them that we are not tied to material things. We're not tied to situations. Things can't get us down. Why? Because our hope is from the Lord. Our strength comes from the Lord. We're not dependent on these worldly things. Because at the end of this, we can't take none of this with us. At the end of this, our re- our reward is everlasting life. Amen. At, at the end of it, it, he ain't say, okay, you walk, you be my disciple. At the end of it, I'm gonna give you a Benz. At the end of it, I'm gonna give you a a, a 2.4 million dollars. You know, he didn't say he was gonna give you that. He said he gave, I gave you everlasting life. Amen. Wo- 20, 23 goes on to say, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithes and, and mint and 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 eyes and, and cumin and have omitted the, the weighter matter, the heavier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. Meaning we, we come, and, and I'm not saying us, but if, if you look at the, the, the kingdom and the body of Christ as a whole, if you look out into the world like, the, the, the world should be dominated by God. It shouldn't be dominated by evil. Like, it's too many Christians, too many people that say they're baptized believers in this world for this world to look like it does, at, at, at least at this proportion. Like, it's, you, should, you should go out, and I shouldn't run into uh, ten non-believers and one believer. Because if he says one chases a thousand, two chases tens of thousands. Well, which way are we chasing them? Are we chasing them to God, or are we chasing them back out into the world? Amen? We should. We are disciples, so we should be uh, spreading the good gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. Twenty twenty six goes on to say, "Thy blind Pharisees, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of of them may be clean also." Too many times we come, we want to dress up. We want to look nice, and that's what I said to my wife. Man, um, to my wife about why I I, I really don't like I, I go to work. I look because I'm aging regardless whether I put on a, a, a dress shirt, slacks, um, gas station uniform. I'm aging, and what's on side on the inside of me is God. So I do my best every day. Am I perfect? No, but I do my best every day to display God. Amen. But too many times we come and we clean up what's on the outside. And we want to look good. We want to say the part, amen, the preacher, clap, dance to the praise team, sing along. But on the inside, we're full of bitterness. We're full of unforgiveness. I know. We, we're full of jealousy. We're full of strife. We're full of wrath. And we, and we take that out into the world, and, and we think when we go talk to people that they don't pick up on that. Like they pick up on that. And you're supposed to be a child of God, and you, you're trying to win me to Christ. But I can see the bitterness in you. I can see how you rolled your eyes to that person when they walked in front of you. But you want me to come to Christ. So I ask this again. Are we disciples of God or are we apprentice of the world? Like, what are we going to do? We, we got to be, you, you, you can't be lukewarm. You either got to be hot or cold because he's going to spew you out. Amen. So what are we doing? He says the, the devil walks around to and fro looking who he can devour. So we should be on our guards. When you get ready to go to war, what, what, what do they do when they go to war? I know I got my military people. Bishop was military. What do they do? They, they get the troops. They send them to a base. They train them for combat, for whatever may, may arise. They are training. When we come here on Sundays, we should be getting training. We should be getting the word of God, not just on Sundays, Tuesdays, Wednesday, Thursdays, every day. Even if we're not in the house, we should be getting some kind of training, whether it's reading the Bible app, re- reading our Bible, fellowshipping with somebody else that's in the body. We should be getting training. Why? Because it, it, we warred, not against flesh and bloods, but against spirits, right? Minister said it the other night. She said, um, last Tuesday, she said, too often we get upset with people by the things that they do. And it's not the person that's operating, it's the spirit. 
Amen. So so we need to learn to prepare to, to go at this battle against the spirit. It's because it's not flesh. Amen. 34 goes on to say, wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them you shall kill and crucify, and some of them you shall scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from the city to city. The Lord has sent us somebody that will tell us a good word, and because it ain't the word that we want to hear, it's the word that we need, not what we want to hear, we'll, sh- we'll shoo them away. Or because they get up and they, and they got an anointing on their life where they can, they can move, the, move the people, they can move the spirit, we'll, we'll bad talk them. And this is in the body. This is not out at the world. This is not at Burger King. This is not at McDonald's. This is in the body. We'll, we'll shoo them away. And, and, and God is saying, woe, woe unto you. Don't, don't do this. I sent you this. I sent you help. You asked for help. You prayed for help. I sent you help. Now you, you're turning it away. Amen? 35 goes on to say that upon that upon you may come all the righteousness blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel and to the blood of Zacharias, the, the son of Barakas, whom you slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things sh- shall come into the, to this generation. Look around. Look around at this generation. Just look at them. They're killing one another. The, the, uh, we got men sleeping with men, women sleeping with women, S- some Some sleeping with animals like we don't know what's going on out here in the world. But he said it was going to come. Why? Because because the disciples aren't teaching. The the, the disciples are are showing a form of godliness, but we deny the power. We we go out in the world and and we want to be like the world. We want to look like the world. We want to dress like the world. We want to act like the world. But he called he set us apart to be different for a reason, for his glory, to build of his kingdom. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Matthew 24, 5 goes on to say, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. I, re- I'm, I, I'm, I think back to when um, I was in school, amen, and when I was in school, yeah, I did go to school. When I was in school, um, a lot of times the teachers would give you book reports or, or work to do, right? But um, when you had an assignment, like say you had to write an essay, before the times of internet, you had what they call an encyclopedia. So you would go to the to the table of context and to the back of the encyclopedia, and you would find the topic that you're writing on, and you would get it, and you would write it out. You would write your story. You, you couldn't plagiarize, but you could write your story from what you read and learn. Likewise, see, the world took what we're supposed to be doing in the body, and we using it for the world. But we should be using it in the body first. This, this book right here. Is, 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 is no different than an encyclopedia. Whatever you're dealing with, is the answers to it is in this book. And if you don't know where, all you got to do is turn to the back of it. It's an index back here, and it'll tell you everything you're dealing with. So, so see, when we, come, when we come to people and we're telling them and we're trying to help them, we need to be telling them, hey, all the answers you will find if you, if you just stop and look in this book. If you just stop and look in this book. Everything that you're dealing with. But too many times, we don't want to tell them, how God would handle it, we want to tell them how I would handle it. Some a girlfriend come to you might say, "Oh, girl, um, such and such was talking about me, ran me down, la da 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 la." And you you want to give them flesh, you know? You give them flesh instead of giving them the word of God. You know what I'm saying? No weapon formed against you shall prosper. That's what you should be telling them. Uh, keep your head up. Don't worry about them. They're gonna talk. They talk about Jesus, but you keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen. If we could turn it to Second Timothy. 215. 215. And you got to say amen. Amen. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, but shun profane, profane and vain babbling, for they will increase unto the more ungodliness. Amen. So we need to be studying to show ourselves approved. Un- unto God for a workman that needed not to be explained. Why? And he said, stay away from the babbling. Stay away from the gossip. Stay away from the naysaying. If you focus on you and what God has called you to do, you ain't got time to be over there babbling, worrying about what somebody else is doing or not doing because you too focus on what God called you to do. And, and if you're a disciple of God, that's what you're doing. If you're a apprentice of the world, you're a busybody. You're running to and fro, all in everybody's business, want to know what everybody else is doing instead of focusing on what you're doing. Amen? John, John's, 1 John 4, one says, Believe not every spirit, but test that spirit to see whether it is of God. We, 
the only way we're going to be able to test that spirit is if we're in our word and we got the word of God in us so that we can know when somebody is coming to us. Is it coming to us in, in love? Is it coming to us in kindness? Is it coming to us in meekness? Or is it coming to us with an a ulterior motive to use us? Because the Bible says, watch out for them that will spitefully, spitefully use you. Is it coming to you because they, they know, hey, this is a child of God. I'm going to give them a sob, sob story, um, and they're going to give me what I need. You know what I'm saying? You got to be able to discern. One one thing I, I I love about my wife, I, I was I had this situation a couple months ago, and one thing I love about my wife, I truly love my wife. I try not to just tell her, I try to show her through my actions. But I, I real, am I perfect? No, I'm far from perfect. So y'all pray for her, you know, keep her in prayer daily, amen. Because I can I could be a, a piece of work. But I love my wife because when when I got a situation that I I, I need help dealing with, elder. Like, I, I one, we sh- when we got situations, we should always try to find somebody in the body to, to get advice from, to, to deal with. So so I all, when I got a situation that I feel like I can't handle, and every now and then I did some of those, I, I go to my wife. So I'm like, you know, the situation was arriving, and I just wasn't getting no, just wasn't getting no, uh, no rest about it. I couldn't figure it out. Uh, and I, when I get to the end, I'm going to tell you why I couldn't figure it out. Amen. So I go to my wife, and I'm saying, babe, you know, this is what's going on, la, 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 you know. What do you think? So I'm I'm ready for her to say, yeah, this is what you need to do. Da, 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 da. The first thing she asked me, did you talk to God? Did you ask God? And and it's not just that situation. It's, it's been times when I, I've been on a job, and, and we all know we got that one person we can call. And if they co-sign what we say, we doing it. It's, it's a wrap. So, and for me, that's her. For me, that's her. If, she, if I can get in a co-sign, oh, it's a wrap. It's done. So so I'm 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 on this one job and um you know they they didn't kind of tap my biscuits got me upset. So I, I called my wife and I said, babe, you know, this is what they're doing, like, you know, you know, I, I just I can't take it no more. And she wouldn't co sign it. You know what she told to me? She said, Did you pray and did you talk to God? She always says pray and talk to God. So I, so to so to get back to the to the to the last story, when she told me pray and talk to God. Now she's a woman. And and anybody that knows women know that they're naturally, after they tell you pray and talk to God, they're gonna naturally interject their opinion anyway. That's just what they do. And and I and I bless the Lord that she did because when she interjected, she asked me did I talk to God, and I was like, yeah, I talked to him, but God was saying do X, Y, and Z. Flesh wanted to do what flesh wanted to do. So after she told me did I talk to God and asked me did I speak to God, she told me the same thing that God was telling me. She said, this is what you should do. This is what da 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 I'm not telling you what to do, but this is what you should do. And so I'm like, so that, that was confirmation. So it, in, in the body, we need to find ourselves and we need to surround ourselves with disciples of God, people that will, will, will not tell you what I want you to do or what I think you should do, but we're going to tell you first seek God. First, talk to God. What is God telling you to do? Is God telling you to move like that? Is God telling you to leave that job? Is God telling you to leave your spouse? Well, well, well I'm not going to tell you to leave it. I'm just going to tell you talk to God. And, and too many times as disciples of God, we want to give people our opinion and, instead of giving them the word, the, the, basis, the basic instructions before leaving earth. This is all you got to do. It, it, it take care of everything. It take care of everything. I want to give us th- I want to give us three F's before I leave here tonight, and and three F's, yeah yeah food 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 amen amen and the three F's to, to disciple to discipleship is is first we we need to pick up our cross and follow him, amen we need to pick up our cross and follow him when when we got baptized and 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 uh, gave our life to Christ and surrendered everything we gave up everything all the habits all the way of thinking all the unforgiveness, all the bitterness, we gave it up. We're picking up our cross and we're following him. Amen. We need, t- But to follow him and to understand where we're going and where he wants us to go, we need to fellowship with him. We need to, we need to stay in fellowship with him, not just on Sundays, not just on, on Tuesdays, not just on Fridays, but 24-7, 365. I, I relate this to the apprentice and in the world, like me, when I, uh, 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 when I get off my job and I come home, my wife will tell you sometimes, like, I, I, I don't want nothing to do with, don't talk to me about food, I don't want to watch food, I don't want nothing dealing with food. Now, I cook dinner, but I don't want to talk about it, I don't want to deal with it, I just want to detach from it. And too many times, the disciples of God, we want to detach from our calling and from the work of God. But we, we are assigned to this thing 24-7, 
365. Ain't no days off. Ferris Bueller. Ain't no days off. Like we can't go home and say, hey, I don't want to do the work of the Lord today. It's, it's not an option. It's not an option, saints. It's not an option. All right. And the last is if we if we if we follow him, if we fellowship with him, he will make us fishers of men. Not us. We can't do it ourselves, but he will make us fishers of men through his word. Amen. Amen. Now, that's all I got for you tonight. I pray that the word bless somebody. I pray that this seed fell on good ground. I pray that it will bring forth much fruit in Jesus' name. I now turn the service over.